We've got some fresh new young talent doing some things that I know you haven't heard before. One, two, three, listen. You gotta have a, like the why, and we know our why. So I think you don't need to reinvent the wheel. Yeah. Millions and millions of people have done this already. You can get help, you can get a roadmap, you can save a lot of time, money, and frustration. <laughs> Welcome to the Value Add Podcast with K&K. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Value Add Show with K&K. Today, Kenny and I um, are here and we want to talk to you about is your money working for you? That's kind of the topic. And basically, you know, long gone is kind of the day of getting a pension or um, your 401k nowadays doesn't even get you enough unless you're investing it properly. So whatever you're doing, you really need to get your money working for you unless you just want to work for the rest of your life. So that's kind of uh, what we wanted to talk about today. And Kenny and I are super passionate about apartments and investing in apartments. I truly believe that that for me is our, kind of our ticket to financial freedom. And so everything that we do on a daily basis, the reason why we work so hard is to build our portfolio so that way, you know, we don't have to work unless we really want to. Yeah, I mean, um, I think we live, like we always talk about, I think we live today in a world where information is like rampant. You can go online, you can find out stuff. I think people learned after 2008 that, hey, I've worked for a company for 20 years, 30 years, you got cut, then your money was in the market. And then you're, and then it got whacked. I mean, if you left it in there, it came back. But I think people are realizing that we're in major, major debt. So if you're going to sit there and rely on the system, rely on a company or a pension and that, that's fine. But that's something that you and I don't really believe in because that's not our world we live in. And, you know, this, this like podcast or what we're talking about today might not just be towards for everybody, but for what you and I do and we're self-employed and people that we work with that want, that want to work and then say, hey, I'm going to take my money and start making it work over here. That's what we're talking about today. So it's simply like we, you know, Crystal and I have like, we work every day, you know, we work, we work, we work, but we decide, we decide a long time ago when we work, we're going to take a certain amount of money and we're going to put it to work. You know, and some people decide that they want to go buy cars and houses and all this crap, which is fine. But as you and I know, when you're 60 years old, that's going to be a problem because you can only work so hard and long, you know? Well, and that was the thing like we were talking about last night is I, I remember growing up, I took like a class uh, about, you know, how to get a job, do a resume. And, and, and one of the things was like, if you put X amount of dollars a week, I think it was like, $15, $20 a week into your 401k, by the time you retire when you're 65, you'll have a million dollars. Yeah. And nowadays, a million dollars, like you couldn't even live out the rest of your life at 65 off of a million dollars. Like, sadly, not to mention not the, the time, fact- Not by the time, at least not by the time we're 65. Well, and not to yeah. mention that people are living longer now. So now, you know, your million dollars might have to last from the time you're 65 till you're 100, let's say. Yeah. And- that's really not a lot of money if you you know break that down over you know thirty five years. Um, and the other thing that's scary about that is if your money's in the market, you're going to go through market shifts over that time. So your million dollars could go down to five hundred, then up. So there is this big you know there's this which is a problem. So look at like two thousand eight people in two thousand eight people retire all the time. They said, oh yay, I'm going to retire. And they had a million dollars in their portfolio, or this and that. And then literally six months later, that was down to maybe three to five hundred thousand dollars. So what did they do? They went back to work. Yep. So that kind of leads us into like, I mean, basically, Crystal. So I think what everybody always asks us, right? Because they're like, you own real estate. How do you do it? Like, it, literally all the time. And whether they listen to us or not, we're like, we should just go on the podcast and talk about this because now it's recorded. If you want to know, just go listen to it. But how 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 did we get started? How do you get started then? How do we get started? Well, I think it's different for everybody and also definitely different depending on what cycle you are, what point in the cycle you are in the market. So Kenny and I got started when the economy was terrible. Um, my way of pushing Kenny is to basically tell him that we're never going to do anything. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I really wanted to buy 
apartments and Kenny was like getting so stressed out about buying you know and this is the thing like I talk about with everybody you really have to just do because everybody's nervous like how do I write an offer properly and maybe I don't really know what I'm doing and um, maybe I'm not going to get approved for a loan and you know all these kinds of things go through your head when you decide that you want to do something like all these your brain kind of tells you all these reasons why you shouldn't do something um, because you're scared so um, Kenny was definitely having some serious stress and I was like let's just throw offers out who cares if they get accepted yeah, we'll just I figure was. it out yes. and if they don't get it, we could always back out yeah. and um so then I kept saying like we're never gonna buy anything so finally um we kept looking in the neighborhood we lived in Mission Hills and so at that time we just kind of became obsessed with driving around Mission Hills looking at every single listing every single house looking on Craigslist seeing what things were renting for what things were selling for and we finally found a house um our goal was hey maybe we should just buy this house renovate it live in it for two years and then after the two year mark we can get it you know up to half a million dollars tax free if we're married we weren't married yet but that was kind of the plan so um that's exactly what we did we bought a house we lived in it we renovated it um and then we we sold it um against my and just to jump in like I know that sounds very simple because you're making it sound simple, but it wasn't that simple because we knew if we bought in and even if we didn't do it right because of the way the market was, we would still win. And we even hit hiccups and bumps in this. But basically, that's that's the thing is there. it is scary to just like jump in. Like we did jump in, but it's not like – just bought it and everything was It's super was great. scary. Yeah. We didn't have, it's not like we said, you know, hey, we're going to buy this house and we need to put half a million dollars into this house. Like we didn't have half a million dollars. We barely, we I think when we- put minimum down. Yeah. We put minimum down. We rehabbed it. We rehabbed the beginning with our one, remember just the beginning. We, we, rehabbed, we did three and a half percent down. Three and a half percent down. We rehabbed the house. We lived in it. The outside looked like a pile of garbage. When people walked in, they said, uh, what's going on here? It's like a brand new house. And then basically we went out and got a construction loan. Yep. And that construction loan said, hey, your value is only going to be this. And then we basically got the construction loan, fixed up the house. Added we, a second we, story. Added a second story. Did all this stuff. That was kind of a nightmare, but we went through it, learned a lot. And then at the end, everybody's like, you're not going to sell for that. And we did. And then we took the money. And then, you know, now it's history, which we can go on. So, Crystal, like, talk about starting basic 101 what do people need to do well and what i wanted to say about that though too is that that's not necessarily like for example i wouldn't recommend that strategy today i think we're at a point in the market where we're kind of at the height in fact we're seeing you know price reductions we're going from a seller's market to more of a buyer's market so that's not really the strategy that's going to work no, today I wouldn't say so, so you have to kind of know where you're at in the cycle um, and to get started today what I would say the absolute easiest way to get started would be to look for a property that you can live in let's say um, like a two to four unit where you live in one unit and then you rent out the rest and hopefully your tenants are paying your mortgage like you could essentially like we have friends and people that we know who have done that and they basically live for free. So that is the best way to get started because now you can save your money. You could renovate potentially the property, increase the value, refi, pull cash out and go reinvest those funds elsewhere. But the biggest thing is to just get in the game and that's the cheapest, easiest way to get in because if you're living in it, you could put down, you know, maybe as low as three and a half percent or five percent. So you don't have to have a ton of cash to get started, um, but you just need to get in the game somehow um, and that's probably the cheapest, easiest way to do it. The next easiest way I would say is if you don't have a lot of cash because especially in Southern California, <laughs> you know, people go like, hey, I want to get in, I want to start investing. How much money do I need? Well, if it's just you, you probably need like, you know, a couple hundred thousand dollars. Well, a apartment, lot of people yes. don't, a lot of people don't have that. And well, even a fourplex, just depending yeah. on where you're buying, you might need a hundred thousand um, dollars. That A lot of people don't have that. And a lot of people, it would take them forever to get that. So what's the next thing? Get a partner. Um, you know, in California, especially, like we have so much appreciation. So you may not get the cash flow. I mean, my my theory on one to four unit properties is that's just a vehicle for you to trade up. Like you're really banking on appreciation at that point because you're definitely not going to cash flow. You buy a two unit, one person vacates, you're 50% vacant. You can't even cover your mortgage. So that's just that's just the way it is. Uh, same thing with a four unit. You're 25% vacant if one person leaves. Then you have turnover cost. And, you know, there's just a lot of things that go into it. So you're never going to make cash flow. And even if you did, it's minimal. But I, I just guarantee you, you're, it's, it's, you're not making cash flow. So yeah. then you bank on appreciation to either leverage or sell and trade up into a, a larger property. 
So Crystal's going really fast, and she must have drank a lot of coffee. I drank coffee. coffee. <laughs> okay. So let me back up, because I'm going to break this down quickly. So I believe, and you know me, whether you're going to go start working out, you're going to start a business, you're going to invest in real estate, whatever it is, you have to understand your why you're going to do it. And then I'm always like, what's your strategy behind the why? Because there's so many people that are making really good money now, but they don't have a strategy on what to do with their money. So what happens is, is they either get lazy and they make dumb investments or they just spend it all on themselves. And then 10 years later, they have nothing, right? Because we, you and I know that. So we, a lot of my like thing that. is, is yeah. how do I get started? Rule number one is if you're going to go buy property, you have to meet with somebody like you and I, residential, commercial, like sit down and go, what does it take to buy this property? What does it take to buy a five unit? What does it take to buy a four unit, right? We got to understand that part. Then we go to the next thing is, okay, so you're telling me I need to save X amount of money, you know, 50,000, 100,000, 200,000, whatever it is, right? And then the next thing is, is basically, if I don't have the money, how do I get the money? So I'm young, I can hustle, I can find the property, but I have somebody over here, my parents, my uncle, an investor that can give, give me the money and I can be a partner and I do all the work and they're just an equity person and I'm this. So people that you and I know that they're out there raising money and buying deals. So I think it's, it is simple as that, but as we always say is the most important thing is you actually have to get started and do something. So many people talk about it, talk about it. Like we said is start driving properties on the weekends, you know, at nighttime, look them up, understand, hey, what did this deal trade for? What did that deal sell for? What neighborhood do I like this, this, and that? If you don't understand your neighborhoods and this and that, you're, you're gonna be all over the place. Like you gotta get a strategy of what exactly you wanna do and this. Like for us, we can talk about it. Like Crystal and I, even though we've been doing this, I mean, it's been 10 years since we've almost been together. We have really been talking about this, I would say, you know, realistically for probably nine years. And we have really been active in the space since when we bought our first place was in 2012. 2012. Yeah. So we're six years, which seems like longer, but we've done so much in six years. That's why it is just besides that. So we understand our strategy changes because the market changes, right? Correct. And so the thing is, you're not going to know how to change your strategy if you're not in the market. Like so, we know we're like nose, you know, ear to the ground, and we know where the market's going. So we know where the market's changing. How do we know that? Because we're in it, we breathe it, we live it. Also, information is out there. There's podcasts, there's emails, there's books, there's everybody, right? There's plenty of experts now that are going on podcasts or this and that, giving you information where the market free is. information, and you can follow yeah. them where they're going. So, what we our strategy now is is we bought an apartment, you know. We built up enough capital so now we can start moving and grooving. And our thing is, is you know, our next goal is, is you know, trade up, get a bigger building, um, then take more assets, trade up to another bigger building. I mean, right now our goal is in the next two, three years to be at 100 units, right? So you and I, we sat down and said, here's a strategy and goal how to get there, right? But it takes time because you have to sell the assets, you got to move into another asset, this. So we understand that. But so Crystal, what do you say... Um, to uh, somebody that's doing apartments, because it's way different. Like residential is like, let's be honest, if you're doing a four unit, a three unit, you're probably gotta put 20, 25% down. If you're doing a one a one unit, you could put a little 3% down. And then we don't recommend a one unit to buy and rent. And then if you're doing a two unit, you could put, actually if you live in it, 15% down. So you'd live in one and rent the other. But if somebody's gonna get into multifamily, just quickly, like what, what are the quick tips and what are they what are they looking at? Like what's the realistic and the reality of the situation? Well, multifamily is just a lot different. So um, with residential, like Kenny said, I mean, it's pretty cut and dry. Like just put down 5%, 20%, 25%, just depending on what your scenario is and what you're doing, whether it's owner-occupied, non-owner-occupied, those things. Um, for apartments, it's like, okay, we'll go to 75% LTV, but the property has to cash flow. I mean, there are definitely, it's just like way too much to really get into today, but there are parameters and underwriting guidelines and stress rates that we apply. So just because you can get 75% LTV technically, like by guidelines for most banks, some sometimes even 80 Definitely in Southern California, you're not you're not really getting a seventy five percent loan because the cash flow isn't there. If you do, you got a great deal. 
If you do, you got a great deal and we're just kind of not really there in the market right now. So it would be, you know, shocking if you got that. So you can't just go out and say like, now I'm going to buy apartments and I have X amount, I have exactly 25% down. Well, you're probably going to have to drop that dollar amount because more realistically, people are putting 30 to 40% down to purchase properties right now. And you know, that's just kind of the way it is to get in the game. That's why getting into apartments is a little bit tougher. Um, but it's it's worth it. I, I think the more apartments that you own, the better. If you own a five unit building or let's say you own a 10 unit building and one person vacates, now you have 10% vacancy, not a 25 or 50% vacancy. You can probably still cover your mortgage and your operating expenses and break even if you have one unit vacate. Um, you also have economies of scale. So instead of owning like you know, a duplex, a fourplex, and maybe another fourplex, that's like three lawns that you have to take care of or like landscaping and laundry rooms or, you know, there's just a lot of things that you need to take care of for the common areas of a property. The larger the building, you need one one place to landscape. You have one laundry room. You have one property to drive by. So it's just a lot easier the bigger you get. And I see this so many times with clients. They go, you know, you and Kenny are just really comfortable and we're just little guys and we're just going to like take it slow. I'm going to keep buying these residential properties. No, it's just about like not letting that fear overtake you. One apartment is the same as 100 apartments in my book. Um, I don't even own a 100-unit building yet, we've but managed we've them. managed them. We've renovated them. I, I see how the numbers work. Operating costs are a lot less the bigger buildings that you get. Um, it's much easier. You're not driving all over town when you need to go visit your properties and things. Maintenance is easier. You just go to one place. Um, so all of that is just so much better the larger the buildings you get. And really, it's about overcoming your fear of that. Um, and just really kind of doing your research and homework. Like I said, if you can own a duplex, you can own a 200 unit building. It's really no different. It's just, it's just, it's, it's time. It's like, you know, it's, it's just, it's, it's just having balls is really what it is too. Sort of, I mean, you, you just got to do it. Sometimes you got to be patient to get there. Cause you're not going to get there tomorrow unless you raise the money. Um, but you know, going back to like what Crystal said is I like, I think the psyche behind all this and why we want to talk about this is that we literally talk to people all the time that want to get started. And then they call us the next year and the next year and the next year. And we've had the same conversation. I'm like, hey bro, you know, we've had the same conversation for four years. It And this is why somebody that we respect highly, that you know who it is, um, always would say, just get in the damn game. Just get in the game. Get in the game. Like, and at some point you say, don't talk to me anymore until you just bought something yeah. because we're just going to keep going in circles. Like, this is not helping you. And, and with this person, which we want to go meet with soon, our conversation isn't about getting in the game now. We're down here. It's about now we're in the game. We've been in the game for six years. Now we're doing all this. How do we step up our game? Like, we, how do we go from here to here? Because he's already done here to here. Now he's gone here to here and here to here. So we, there's people you can sit down with and go, how do you go from here to here? And that's another story. But the psyche of people of not wanting their money to work for them because they're like, they don't want to put the time in. They're scared because... How they don't want to lose their out. money. And, like, yeah. There's plenty of professionals around you. And the one thing I will say if for us, if you are going to buy real estate, the toughest thing about real estate and the biggest thing is management. Like People that fail in real estate, if they own apartments, unless they really just bought an expensive deal and just, I don't know what they did, um, they just mismanaged the property. I mean, there's 100 unit buildings out there that are mismanaged right now. You and I know that. I agree with that, but I also think if you, you know, do your research and your homework, it's awfully hard to lose in apartments specifically. People always need a place to live. You have tenants. This is not the stock market, okay? I don't feel comfortable being in the stock market. Like, it, real estate is a tangible thing. It's here. Like, unless it gets, you know, blown away by a tornado or burnt down or something, like, it's not going anywhere. You own, like, a piece, like you said, a piece of the earth. Like, it's here. It's it's not, nothing's happening to it. Um, unless there's just, like, some massive catastrophe in which we would all be in trouble. So, it's just about the safest investment that you could have. So, people who are scared or nervous to get going, like you just got to kind of do again, like I was using last night, the example, like public speaking, the first time you, you speak in front of a group of people, it's so nerve wracking when you do it afterwards, you're like, wow, that wasn't so bad. It's the same thing. You're going to buy your first building. And after that, you're like, wow, that wasn't so scary. Like it's all fine. We're, I mean, we, look, yeah. we started this podcast. We, we came up with the concept. We wanted to do it. We basically 
had our why, we built a strategy around the why, and now we're here doing it, right? So people are feared because they're not properly I feel like people are scared because they're not properly set up, right? They haven't met with the loan officer. They haven't understood where would they want to invest. They understood why they want to buy there, what type of property. What they're doing is they're trying to put themselves in a building here without doing any of the work. Well, and secondly, to to that end is like most of us have – you know, day jobs or whatever you want to call it. So this is something that you kind of have to do in your extra time. So some people don't want to give up their lifestyle of going to happy hour with friends or going on their vacations or sitting in front of the TV or, you know, whatever it is that you might want to do. Like this is shit you have to do like in your free time. So you have to give up that time. And secondly, if you have a good job already and you're making some cash, yeah, just because you're making that and you feel like you deserve that house and you feel like you deserve that BMW or that Mercedes and that nice vacation okay great if you want to do that but that's really small thinking like really you've got to think big picture cash flow like I want to be sitting on a beach somewhere and I'm still making money no matter the fact that I'm laying on a beach not doing shit you know that's my goal in life also too I think people you're you're, when you're third when you're in your 30s like we are and then when you're in your 60s like you're not going to be able to grind and work this hard and we know people that are in their 60s and 50s that own apartment buildings, let me just tell you, the people that own apartments and the people that don't, that are like have to go to work every day and don't, um, there's it, there's a difference. There's a huge difference. This person's stressed out of their mind, which that means you're aging quicker, you're stressed. This person isn't as stressed because they know every month, even if things change, it's not, there's money coming in. I mean, that's, that's why we're doing this. And you just don't want to have those regrets too. You don't want to end up 60 years old going like, man, I really should have, you know, if I would have just sacrificed when I was younger, like I wouldn't be suffering and struggling to make ends meet now that I'm, you know, in my sixties and I'm slowing down and, you know, I want to enjoy my life, whether it's grandkids or I want to golf every day, or I just want to be able to like do whatever it is that I want to do. Um, so even for me, again, when it goes back to that 401k, like that's not cash flow. You want cash flow. You want assets whenever you retire. Like it's only getting more and more expensive to live. It's and, not getting and, any cheaper. And, you know, just to kind of like throw this in there, which I love is which I can't, I can only tell you this if you're, you know, we are, we know this, but the most amazing thing is, is that when you're working here and you start having your money work for you. There's nothing more amazing like when you bought that building and you rehabbed it and you added value and then all of a sudden you're like, you're done and it's cash flowing. But then all of a sudden you get that appraisal, it's worth 500 grand more, a million more. You're like, holy smokes. You're like, do you know how hard I would have had to work over here to get that? And I was able to do them side by side. And then what you do is you realize, wait a minute, I could do two at a time, right? And I can do three at a time while I'm still working here because you're getting smarter and smarter. What people don't realize is if you buckle down, like you said, just get disciplined, get focused, get a, and you know, get the goal in mind. In ten years, it's crazy how far. And we're six years into this. I think four more years, just how far we could be. You know, the market if it corrects, there's more opportunities. And the thing is, is that and the trajectory at, at which you go, like your first property, like it's it's slow going because you own one property and you're trying to get to your second one. But then you buy your second property, and then it. it like it's a little faster when you can get your third and then you have your third property it's a little faster to get your fourth and so you're really like let's say that the bar is really low and kind of steady at the bottom but then you can kind of go up really quickly the more property you own because you have more assets to leverage you have more things to trade I mean the hardest part is really getting started and it's all uphill like I mean it's all uphill from there like but I'm, I'm just I'm and I and I keep reiterating this if you're going to go run a marathon, you got to just start running. Because if the marathon's in six months, you're not, I mean, unless you're some crazy athletic person that I don't know, and you can run 24 miles and do nothing, kudos to you. But I know I couldn't do that and you can do that. Well, you, you have got, to train But too. you got to have, yeah. why am I running the marathon? There's your why. Then what is the strategy behind the why? And then what is your goals? And you have to have a strategy to get to this point, right? So with us is we have a point here and we have the strategy. But if you're not prepared, if you're not meeting with us, if you're not doing all these steps that we talked about, we'll go over again. Meet with a professional. You know, figure out what the fi- financing is the most important, right? Unless you have cash and you're rich right. and you just inherited a bunch of money, you still should be financing. Then you go meet with like a broker and figure out how that works. And then you start figuring out what type of property you want to buy. Then you figure out where would you want to buy the property. 
right? And then, the neighborhoods and are then, so important. And then you're going to execute. But the, all this is called work. And if you have a normal job, you have to do this maybe every night, one hour, you know, one hour a night every night. Maybe on Saturday and Sunday you're driving the property. Like how many times people are like, oh, drive around, you're working every Saturday and Sunday. Like, yeah, but in 10 years from now, look where you're going to be at and I'm going to be at. It's not a big deal. We still have a life. We still get to enjoy ourselves. But we're thinking big picture because when we're 50 and 60, we know where we want to be. So with us, we're not going to rely on Social Security. We're not going to rely on um, a 401k. We're not going to rely on the stock market because all these things that we're relying on, that's not what that's not what we're it's not what we're we're not pushing that needle. Well, and who knows if social security is going to be around it's not even and that, who but knows not even that no needle. but absolutely it is because how many people do we know that are close to retirement age that sadly are going to have to keep working like they just yeah. didn't make that plan i mean that's what we get to learn from the generations before us about like how to invest your money. I, I see people like that and I actually feel bad. I don't want to be, in, I, I'm like, I'm sure as shit not going to be in that position. So what do I have to do? I have to start now. Yep. And I think, I think like what we always talk about is um, we don't just say this, we actually do it. And you have, if you're, if you're, if, if you're like, we were talking about this last night and I know what to kind of wrap this up is like, if you're 25 or you're 30, you don't have a family, you don't have this, it's a, the best time to get started. The worst time is, is once you've bought the house and the family and the kids and the cars and you've built this, but I have to keep this whole facade up because for some reason, or I, I want to have it. Like people are sitting on so much equity in the house. It's like, it's so hard to get started then than here. But then yeah. again, that's not true. So like for those people who It's do, harder. Let's say it's harder. Of course it's harder, it's harder yeah. because you never want to backpedal your lifestyle. That's the only reason it's harder. Nothing else. I mean, you can be married and have kids and still be a renter. Plenty of people do it. Plenty of our tenants are living in apartments with their kids. They'll probably never buy. So this is I, we're renters. We don't own our home. We're renting we're not, right now because we sold everything. Yeah, we're not planning on being homeowners. I'm not planning on paying a mortgage. Somebody else needs to pay my mortgage. You know, somebody yeah. else. I people need to be paying my mortgage. My tenants pay my so, mortgage. So, so, so quickly, explain that because what Crystal's saying is is that our goal is is we build up this machine over here, right? Yes. To a certain level of cash flow, and then we go buy a house, and so we're gonna work here, but this pays for this. And then we, if we want to go on a vacation, that pays for that. If we want to buy another car, that pays for that. Right. That's, so, what, the, that's what people like. The rich people in this world, the wealthy people in this world that own real estate, they buy the asset that pays for the liability. I right. Have, right. That's what. That's what, you buy the asset to pay for the liability. The asset pays you. The renters pay all that. Right. But let's just say you already own the house and you have the family and all of that. Like. If you really truly want to get started, get first off, get on the same page with your partner because that, that could cause some problems. Yeah. But well, that's a secondly, yeah, that's a get rid of that fucking house. Like that thing costs you money. I love having a house. I mean, I'm oh, I, I love having a house. You know why? Because I'm always doing a project. I'm always like what do you mean? Doing, I'm doing the project. Right. But we're like, <laughs> let's do the landscaping. Let's, you know, redo the kitchen. Let's buy but that all costs money. money. That costs a lot of money. You're not gonna be investing that money. So if you you don't have any investments the first thing you need to do is get rid of your house i guarantee you you have equity in your house and you can use that equity tax free most likely depending on how long you've lived in your house maybe you have more than half a million but if you're if you're married you get half a million dollars tax free when are you ever going to get that that can go into your first building. Believe me, your kids are not going to care that you live in a rental. It's all you. That's your ego. That's what you wanted. That's what you dreamed of. Okay? That's not the American dream anymore, people. Like, get with it. Yeah. Get rid of the house. Get over your ego. Go buy some apartments. Set your kids up. So, what, so to finalize this, what are, what are the – what's your final – thoughts and tips on people to basically going back to where you were is to getting your money to work from you what are the most important tips you can give somebody to get started uh just to to really jump in and do so like i said you've got to take your you and your free time you should be hustling you should be driving neighborhoods getting into it getting your feet wet walking properties talking to brokers talking to a mortgage broker figuring out what you can qualify for you just really and then after that you need to do like you cannot sit around and you know 
analyze this every way from Sunday. It's really pretty simple. We just make it complicated. So you've just got to do it. Yeah, and I'll, and I'll leave with this. And I think what importantly what people understand is that when you're actively always looking and in the game, um, it's very important because when the market turns, you're going to be right there. If you're out of the game, when the market turns, you want to jump in. Well, guess what? Us that have been buying have these relationships, we're going to trump you. You're, we're going to get the better deals. You're going to come in and you're fighting with that. So I would, I would agree is get started, get a plan, get a strategy, get on the same page as your partner because sometimes that doesn't happen and you just got to execute. And yes, it's work and it's extra time. But when you're 50 years old and you're 60 years old and I see the two different people, I'd rather be this person because, because of what could potentially happen in the future of social security and all that. So, yep. So, so thanks guys. Um, we get appreciate your, your time. Yep. Working yep. for you immediately. Yep. That's the word.